Peace and blessings, y'all. Welcome back to Multidimensional Soul. I'm Courtney, and today I have my first guest and friend, Pamela Renee. What's up, y'all? Thank you, Pam, for joining us or joining me today. <laughs> I'm so used to <laughs> being on another show where there's multiple people. This is still trying to get into my lane being solo. Um, but yes, my first guest, Pamela Renee, the brand my plant friend. Um, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. How's your weekend been? It has actually been a relaxing one. I'm used to it being real busy, but I took a moment to just let it chill out this weekend. Yes, moments. I had last weekend, I felt like I chilled really hard. And so this weekend I had all these plans, like I'm going to do this, 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 and I'm not going to have a relaxing weekend this weekend. I'm I'm hitting go. Yesterday I did two tasks and I was like, okay, I'm going to get in the bed and watch Grownish for the rest of the night. <laughs> that was enough. Yeah. I literally got, I think I maybe like propped my pillows up about 7 PM and literally was in the bed the rest of the night. And didn't go to sleep till like 1 a.m. this morning. Jesus. I mean, I sometimes really you need that, though. This is true. So I feel like um, I'm trying to get in the habit of allowing self-care to all, not always be like a list of things. Like, I got to do a face mask. I got to tuck in the tub. And I got to do this. And I should do that. Sometimes it's just being like, fuck all that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Let me sit my ass down. Because I'm tired. And... You know, my life runs on lists and, and uh, yeah, no, I was just done with that. But uh, I'm glad you had a relaxing weekend. One thing I wanted to talk to you about today was your brand, Pamela Renee, the brand. Like, how did you birth that baby? What was, what was like your goal and what you wanted, what did you want to bring with Pamela Renee? Well, with Pamela Renee, I've been creating content for years, at least like, ooh, what is this, 2021 we're in? So mm -hmm. since about 2015, I've been creating oh, wow. content for other people and their brands. Um, and I just did it as like a, oh, I enjoy doing this. So yeah, I'll help you out. I didn't really look for pay. I was taking like free products as payment because I just like to do it for fun. So I didn't really take myself serious. Um, and then as the years went by and I kept doing it more for other clients, I was like, yeah, we need to turn this into something like this needs to be some kind of brand. I need to start getting paid. I can't do this for free no more. Um, so I think 2018 is whenever I was like, okay, Let's do this. And I created the brand. I set up my site and everything and just kind of rocked out from there. Um, I think that's I think that's really dope. But when you say you started in 2015, I think that's kind of crazy to me because I'm thinking back like social media presence in 2015 or how my social media presence was on in 2015, who I was following, what they were doing. I just feel like I don't even remember seeing like content, quote unquote. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. I like and I get what you're saying. Like back then, it was more like a, oh, I got this item. I'm going to just, you know, always post them and promote them and whatnot. That's kind of how it started for me. Oh, and right. there was this brand. They're no longer in business now, but this brand called Ours by Black Black Joy. Yeah, Ours by Black Joy. Um, they reached out to me because they saw that I was always posting whatever it was I was wearing or whatever it was I was using and tagging those businesses in it. And um, that brand itself, it was like a black owned subscription box. So every month they sent out different black owned items, whether it was beauty or um, skincare items, candles, like it was a whole bunch of different random stuff that was in their boxes. And they reached out to me and they were like, Hey, how would you feel, you know, running our social media platform for us and creating the content and stuff. I see what you've been doing and I really like it. And I already had fun doing it. So I was like, okay, yeah, sure. So that was my first official client that I ever had. Um, and they paid me like a little bit of change. And they also, I got their products for free, their subscription boxes for free, which was good enough to me. Cause back then I was young. I didn't really think, 
let me monetize off of this, like right. heavy. I just saw free item and a little bit of change. Sure, I'll go for it. Oh, um, now that's not even how that works. Now it's all about pay me, pay me, pay me, and free product. I was on this. Um, I don't know if you follow her on Instagram. I wet my plants. She did yep. this series of like why if you're an influencer and you have monetized posts, why you absolutely shouldn't just take the form of payment. Um, um or and I was just like, wow, like not even product isn't even a form of payment anymore. But I think it's because I'm still new to all of it. So in my mind, like product should be okay. But then she's like, if you have over X, Y, Z amount of followers, that's not how it works. And there's also a website where you can plug in like your followers, engagement, reach, and um, I guess something you can plug in that'll tell you how much you should be charging a business when they come to you for content creation or advertising. I just think the whole social media is so, I feel like different. Not that it's not fun anymore, but it's definitely like content heavy and very business. Like people get to the bag on social media and yeah. it's a, it's a real serious thing. And then um, plants, are you intending to make plants a part of the Pamela Renee brand? I see sometimes you post plants, but then sometimes you don't. And you recently just had a poll asking people what they wanted to see more of. And then you didn't get any definitive answers. I actually, I got answers. One thing I'm horrible at is like reposting whenever I do polls, reposting the results for it. Cause I always forget, but I actually, I'm in the process of revamping the Pamela Renee's website and I am going to have a plant section on there. I'm not really looking to monetize off of the plants because that's just something that I love. That's kind of my self-care go-to at times. Plants are my therapy, I guess right. you could say. So I don't really want to make money off of it, but I do want to, you know, show off my plants. And if I can make a how-to tip and it helps somebody else, I'll post that so that, you know, teach other people what you may know. But it is going to be out there soon once that site I, is revamped. I just started like how-to tips mm. on my page. Um, I thought initially I just wanted a place to share pictures, like pictures. Let's just all look at pretty plant pictures. And then sometimes in my DM, I get so many questions or like, hey, how did you go about this? Or your plants look this way. And I wanted to know, and I'm just like, mm, maybe I should post tips, but it's still a little hard for me because I feel like I just got in this thing. Who am I to give tips? But also whatever works, works, especially for me. And then what doesn't, doesn't. So I've just kind of started making the longer captions to share a few tips and it hasn't been bad so far, but it's just still new. And then the content create creation part of it, you helped me a lot with that, getting my stories to look a certain way, using all these damn apps, girl, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> to, create, <laughs> to create like videos or a certain type of post like it is really like you got to go to school real quick it, may, it reminds me of when I first went natural like back in 2012 and mm -hmm. I was all over YouTube and you follow all the different YouTubers and you just watch the videos so much to figure out technique what to use how to use it that, that's what content creation feels like to me only a bit harder yeah it is and it's a constant learning process like even I'm still learning stuff I join so many different free seminars, free Zoom classes. Uh, whenever people throw up eBooks for free, I'm getting it. I've even done some where people were offering, you know, paid sessions to learn things from. I've done a couple of those if I really thought that it was worth it, just so I can learn little tips and tricks here and there. Because you can never stop learning in anything when it comes to plants, content, life, anything. There's always something more that you're not gonna know. But with your how to's, I would still put that stuff out. Like you might feel like you don't know enough or you're just starting out, but your little tips might help the next person. You True. never know. 
You know, it's funny that you say that about like the free workshops and seminars or or not necessarily seminars or like Zooms or whatever, because mm-hmm. I do that when it comes to like mental health and self-care. Um, like if I see someone that I follow that typically have paid opportunities, I have paid for some of the opportunities, but I don't care to do it every time. But when they have something that's free mm-hmm. or a book recommendation or anything like that, I'm always like, let me get that Ooh, ebook. Let me grab that. Even though I hate ebooks, let me grab, like, let me grab this. Let me, let me join that. Um, I don't know why I never, I would never think to do that with, uh, content creation, I guess. Cause it really wasn't on my radar until I just wanted things to look better and look a certain way. There's so much out there. And even if you just go on Pinterest and you type in like content creation or whatever, you'll see a whole lot of different tips on there too. Like they're everywhere. So it's ways to diff- to learn things. And, you know, of course I got your back. If you want to know how to do something, and if I know how to do it, I'll gladly tell you, show you, record it for you, whatever it may be. Cause I have no problem sharing those little tips here and there. You always come through every time I'm like, I need, I want to be able to do this. or I want to create this look. You are real quick. Even if you're like, Hey girl, I'm responding to emails at work, but I'm, I'll send you a video late later. I wrote it down. You always get back to me. And I feel like when, whenever you give me whatever it is, whether it be like a list of steps, video, like a screen record, it's always easy to follow. And if I do fuck it up, <laughs> it's user error initially. <laughs> Um, initially, cause I, I, I lack a little patience and I just want it to work like soon as I don't want to play around with anything, but I'm figuring that, that whole thing out, especially when it comes to the plants. Cause that's just an area that I'm having a whole lot of fun in right now. Girl, these um, plants will test you. Oh girl. <laughs> oh girl. Girl, listen, I got one upstairs right now and I'm just every time I walk by, I'm like you could go. I know that's not affirming this plant. You <laughs> and I know right. you, this that ain't what the plant needs to hear. I should speak kind words. Honey, you can go. That's as kind as I can get before I put her ass in the trash can. I have faith in that plant. I know she's going to make it. Just hold out. Hold out until the springtime because I know exactly which plant you're talking about. <laughs> Girl, I want, I want Janelle Monet little ass up out of here. Like, you could go. You could go. I'll do a Janelle Monet 2.0, but you can get the fuck because anyway, when did, when did you start with plants? Like, have you always been into them or was this brought on by quarantine? A lot of people kind of got the plant fever from quarantining. I've been into plants for years, but it kind of got real heavy during quarantine because I had more time to spend at home and actually tend to them. Whereas in the past, when I would get a plant, a lot of times they would end up dying a couple of months later because I wasn't giving them the proper care. So I wasn't always home or I just didn't have the patience for it. But quarantine and being here at the house 24 seven, it definitely gave me the time that I need it to really focus on my plant. I think quarantine just happened to be during my one year mark. Um, Last year I told, I kept telling, well, not last year, 2019, I kept telling Brittany, I want a plant, I want a plant. I didn't research anything. I didn't know what kind of plant I wanted. I didn't know what I was supposed to do with the plant. I just kept saying, I feel like I should have a plant. I want a plant. She got me a snake plant and I got a pothos, a pothos, excuse me. And... I would told myself if I can keep them alive for a year, I'm going to do this thing. Like I'm going to do it for real, for real. And baby, that year hit during quarantine and I took off running, running, like hit the ground running. And then it was later. My cousin said, you should make a plant Instagram. And I was like, I'm scared. Don't ask why. I don't even know why I said that. So childish, but I ended up creating one and that's now my favorite little space on Instagram. So And the plants? Plant pages on IG have really taken off. They have it's so many of them now. Like everyone has a plant page. I, I I like the people that have their plant page, but like and still incorporate their stuff. Sometimes I wish that I hadn't created a second page and just incorporated in it into the page that I had. Yeah. I can but, see but, that. 
because it becomes a bit much and then I'm, I'm on my plant page a whole lot more and then I'm sometimes find myself wanting to post some of the same shit on both and there are people that follow both and I'm just like well you're gonna see this shit in the stories two times or you're gonna see this on both the pages and it just kind of ends up being what it is I feel like it's a little redundant sometimes mm-hmm. but I don't I've and as crazy as it sounds I've kind of comp contemplated getting rid of my old page completely. I mean, if you're not that active on it, I don't see why not. Cause I've done that before. I've let pages die off. Like my current podcast page, that's just sitting there. It's just <laughs> sitting. People still follow it. And I look and I'm like, why? I haven't posted anything in so long. What are y'all doing right now? <laughs> <laughs> do that if you want to or merge the two just make a post on your personal page and be like hey y'all follow me over here if y'all want more content because that's where i'm gonna be at because it's a lot trying to manage multiple pages and the going back and forth and the dms on both pages it's just too much it is i definitely agree i think i am i think i'm gonna do exactly what you said i'm gonna post on my regular page and just kind of be like hey guys I'm moving over to this page. Uh, it won't all be plant shit all the time. Um, I have been thinking about that. And then when just saying it just now out loud for the first time just made me feel like, yeah, you should go on and do that. As I don't like it. I don't. The one thing is, though, I will have to follow some of the pages that I follow on my old page because I kind of, you know, I follow Shade Room on my other mm-hmm. ones. You know, I need that bit of ratchetry or whatever. But my plant page <laughs> is literally just like plant um, art. And like yoga, like it's real calm over there. So I'm going to have to add some ratchet to that page and then let the other one go. Because I think I I really am tired. I'm over that whole thing. It's just too much. And even me, like I've stayed mostly on the Pamela Renee's page than any other page. Because that's me. Like all aspects of me are on that page. So why not stay there? Right, because you do have No Pressure Co, that Instagram page. But other than stories, I think you're definitely right. You are you are more active on Pamela Renee. Yep. So just merge that stuff over. Why would you just let... Why do, do you have the No Pressure Co page if that's not... I mostly just did that just because that... It is my brand, but I kind of wanted to separate that from my life. So that's why I just created No Pressure Coat, having its own page. But I don't post over there super heavy. I tried to at one point, but like I said earlier, it was just too much trying to constantly post on No Pressure and constantly post on the Pamela Renee. It was just, it was a lot. And I just didn't have it in me. So... Whenever I have like a new drop or something, I'll post. Or if I'm just wanting to let people know about a sale or repost customers wearing the stuff, then I'll post. But I don't force myself to reach a certain post limit over on that page each week. I just post as I feel. I kind of pressured myself this week. Like every day you should make a post. Or if you don't make a post, the days you do, you should post three. And I feel like that kind of got a little old for me real fast. It just didn't feel authentic, Mm -hmm. I guess. And then I was walking around the house, like looking like, oh, I'm going to make a post about this. Oh, I could make a post about that. And then I was like, girl, most times you just make posts on a whim. Like, let it flow as, as it should. You know what sparked that? Amazon telling me I couldn't do their affiliate program. Pissed me off. (laughs) Pissed me off because... It, especially because it didn't tell me which one I was lacking, whether I was lacking in followers or if I were lacking in post. And I wonder what their criteria is for that. I couldn't find it. Well, I, I mean, I found criteria and requirements and like what you needed to have, but it didn't have numbers. Like mm-hmm. it didn't have numbers for YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. It never said how many you needed to have. It just says you need, those are the things that, Those are the four sites they would use to determine your eligibility for it. So, and it never went any further. So I'm just, 
I hate like really vague stuff like that because yeah. I'm an obsessive person. So now I done spent 45 minutes on clicking everything on the site that I could find to see if maybe it would tell me something. I've been searching on Google. I still ain't found shit. And <laughs> I am not an affiliate. I get so I hate over when I, so over it because it's so easy for me to get like down in a rabbit hole trying to figure some shit out. And now I got a little attitude because, well, bitch, I don't care anyway. Whole time, yeah. I care. <laughs> Whole time. Don't let that discourage you, though. And don't let it make you feel like you have to make posts because people can tell whenever you are just posting just to post some bullshit. People and then the, the insights you you know earlier this week you showed me how to create make my page like a creator page. So now I see all the stuff my insights, my reach, the amount of people that saved my page, and at first, I was like, oh, okay, I like this. And then last night, I realized, like, why am I going back through my posts and looking at this? Like, why am I making this, like, a focal point? I do like seeing, like, how I get my likes, if it's from the home page or if it's from, like, a hashtag. But other than that, I kind of got obsessive on that this week, too. And I was like, well, I'm going to post more. Because when you change your page to a creator page, it'll tell you, like, how to keep your engagements up and give you all these tips. And it said three posts a day. See, that's too much. And I see a lot of people, um, I've actually seen a lot of those charts these past couple of weeks where people were like, how many posts and stories should you do each day? And it was like at least seven stories a day, three posts a day. I don't have the time nor the patience to be pumping out, pumping out three posts a day. That's just, Fact. that's too much. And the only reason why I did it the other day is because I scrolled down to the bottom and then I realized, you know, like if you have three, it's a straight block across. But then if you have the one, you kind of have that one little post down there and then the two. And I don't even know why I went down there. So when I posted that day, I was like, let me post three because it's ugly with just that one little post on the row by itself without other two. But I, I, I know that's not something that I want to keep up with. I know a lot of people that post in threes. Um, because, you know, some people make a message. I don't know if that's what to call it, but they post things. And when you go look at their feed, it's saying something or it's a big mm, picture. Yeah. Of one thing. I know I see mean. a lot of people doing that um, on their plant pages. And then it just ends up being like one big plant. And I think that's dope. But also I would never I would never. But you know what? One thing that people, especially people who post a lot like that, they'll batch um batch create content so they might do all their posts and stuff on like a saturday or a sunday or whatever take all their pictures and a lot of them already load that stuff up into a calendar so whenever the day comes for it to post the system that they use whether it be like planoly or unum or whatever it'll automatically post their stuff for them so they're not physically doing it themselves or they just already have all that content created from Sunday or whatever. And then come Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever day it is, they just have to go and hit publish. So a lot of people aren't doing stuff on the fly like that, which is how they're able to make all those posts in a day. That makes sense because for my job, part of what I do is scheduling posts for all of the different properties between Instagram and Facebook. And we don't use any of the two that you said, but I, why wouldn't I even think of that? Like if we're doing this from a business standpoint and some people run their Instagram as a business, of mm -hmm. course they're scheduling content like, duh. Yeah. That makes so much sense. Changing gears. How does, how does your significant other feel about the plants? Um, he's over it. Every <laughs> time I bring a new plant in the house, he's like, oh, another one, another one. And don't let me win a plant from somewhere. He's like, oh, you really won that? Mm. Like, like he doesn't believe you? <laughs> yeah, like he don't believe me that I'd be winning. And I'm like, yes, I won. It. <laughs> Even whenever I got your plant the other day that I shipped to you, when I brought it in the house, I called him and I was like, okay, so you're going to see a plant in here when you get home from work. It's not mine though. So don't even trip. And right. he was already sucking his teeth like mm, another plant. Okay, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> whenever, um, whenever I, I was saying like that day, Brittany came home from work and she was like, how are you? And I was like, I'm great. And she's like, looking at me all weird. Like, what did you do today? And I was like, oh, nothing. And <laughs> 
she was just like, I feel like you lying. And I was just like, I bought three plants today and I'm getting a free clipping. And she was looking at me like, every time I get another plant, her she asked the same two questions. Where is it going to go? And how is it going to get to wherever we PCS to? Like, those are the same two things she asks all the time. And I'm always telling her, like, girl, take it easy. Like, I got it under control. When I bought that Birds of Paradise, though, because, you know, it's about my height. Yeah. Girl, she came home and I, it was just sitting in the foyer. It was heavy. I done drug it up the stairs. And she was just like. Take it in the garage. <laughs> like she was so pissed off. And I said, I can't put her in the garage. It's way too cold for that. She would die in the garage. Brittany said, You're gonna die in the garage. If we bring another plant in here this week, she really be sick of it. But I mean, at the end of the day, it it is a thing that I do, and it's still cheaper than all of the things that she do. So mm-hmm. I just yeah, let me out. have it. She still low key supports it though, because I see that she be taking your pictures for IG and everything when you're out at the nursery. So she still supports it. Girl, let me tell you about that little support. Now she's like, yeah, I need to get me a camera and I'm gonna get a little tripod. And I'm- <laughs> Girl, if you don't just use this phone. For someone that acts like it's death, when I'm like, when we get in the car, I never tell her beforehand. When we get in the car and we're running errands and I'm like, oh, we're going to this new nursery. She's in literally in a passenger seat acting like, like a two year old, like that can't have McDonald's or something like a kid. You know it. that gif of that that boy sitting at the table and he's doing all the kicking. Yes, um, <laughs> her in the passenger side because if I want to go to the nursery, I definitely have to be the one driving because she will not drive there, girl. But then now you want you want a camera because so when you go with me to the nursery, it's like. And plus, I do most of my shopping while Brittany's at work because I don't have no one in there being like, um, you sure you don't have that plant? Where this plant going to go? That one's too big. Like, girl, take it easy. And her biggest thing, though, is the fungus and that. As long as she's always tells me, as long as you keep those like out of the house, I'll be supportive. But as soon as they start coming in here or it's too many of them and they're not leaving fast enough. It's a dub. You got. You're gonna have to get rid of them. And honestly, if that's the main rule, then I just gotta do what I gotta do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's ways to get rid of those because I had the same issue. Brent, um, Brad was the same way. I started getting gnats from one of the plants that I had, and I had to figure it out real quick to get yeah. rid of those because he was like, "Okay, if I have to swat out one more gnat, these things gotta go." <laughs> so I had to figure it out real quick, and I literally got the snake plant in that pothos that time and then Mm -hmm. like a couple maybe like a month after we had them we had like a little game night at our house and this was in 2019 the world was open y'all and I was so embarrassed because it was like I went a month a month or two no it was about a month and I didn't see any of the fungus gnats they weren't there and it was like two days before the game night it was like overload. They were all over the house. And I was so embarrassed because now people are over. We're in the house. You know, I've cooked food. I've ordered some things. We're drinking and playing games. And you see your guests like swat. And then I was just like, guys, mm-hmm. I got to make an yeah. announcement. Right. I'm like, guys, I got to make an announcement. I just got these two plants. I didn't know that soil gnats were a thing. I'm so sorry. My house is not nasty. And they were like, girl, we see like your house is clean. Like, We just didn't know where they came from. We thought maybe you just threw out some bananas or something. I was like, no, it's from these damn plants. And I I just was so embarrassed, so embarrassed. I get it. And actually, I've noticed a lot whenever I get a plant from like a Lowe's or whatever, that's usually whenever I run into that issue. Same, because that bird's paradise Mm -hmm. got my house away right now. And I remember telling you when I got her, like, I'm going to have to repot her immediately because I see a lot of gnats around her soil, even when I was in the store. And I still came home and repotted her. And, you know, I have this whole a list of 3,000 things I do to try and combat them damn gnats. And I've still seen like one or two. It hasn't been a lot. And I feel like it would have been a lot more had I not repotted her. But one or two is enough for me. I don't, I don't want them in here. I, it's just, it ain't, it ain't a look when it comes to these plants. So, but that comes with the territory, you know? Yep. And you have to vet the stuff that you put in your plants because that perlite that I was using at one point, I didn't know 
it was a bad brand. And that seemed to be the biggest cause of all the fungus gnats I was having because I had oh, that sure. light in a lot of the plant soil. And yep. once I repotted them, the gnats were gone. I got into some Facebook groups and um, Facebook groups have kind of just become my thing. I feel like, I don't know why it makes me feel like, bitch, how, how, like you old or something? Like, why are you on all these Facebook groups? I'm in a Facebook group for damn near everything. And I was, I'm in a few for plants and they were saying miracle grow is like the one, whatever they do, however their process is or whatever, they are the most soil net prone like mm -hmm. soil, perlite, like anything you can use. I don't use anything from them at this point anymore because I don't got the time. That I was the period I had. Yeah, they it just ain't it. And um, I like to tell new people that are thinking about getting a plant, I always tell them, if you're thinking about getting a plant, you need to get at least these few things as soon as you get the plant. Because if you get the new plant and then you have the soil gnats and you once you put two and two together that it's the plant, you're likely going to be more prone to throw it away or be like, oh, I don't like plants because they do this because mm -hmm. you weren't prepared. And when I was looking up plants initially, I didn't see anything initially that said anything about soil gnats. I, I didn't even see anything that told me plants get pests. So then when I made my Instagram and people were talking about spider mites and mealybugs and, and scales, I like to pass out. It's a lot you have to check for and you have to really inspect, like get a magnifying glass. You literally got one from Amazon this week. It's too much. It will stress you out. <laughs> I was I have that magnifying glass so close to them damn plants. I'm just like, bruh, no. And some mornings I don't even be feeling like it. But if I think I see something, I gotta I gotta go be inspector gadget because one thing we ain't gonna do is have like an infestation. I don't even like that word. Make me itch. Um, we ain't finna do that. <laughs> like I I don't because I'm not always the I can save this. Like you have so many people online that are always like, oh, I can save it or I'm gonna rehab it. No, I am the throw that whole way and go get another one type of plant mama. Like mm -mm. I'm the save it type until it starts to really stress me. Cause I had what were they? I had some calatheas. Oh, and I yeah, tried and tried. And then I was like, yeah, you got to go. One day I just got fed up and I was like, to the trash, you go and just dumped it out because I couldn't do it no more. Yeah, no, not. I try to be and you kind of encourage me to be the safe because, you know, the one we was talking about earlier. I've been mm -hmm. telling you for weeks I'm going to throw. No, let her stay. She's going to act right in the spring. <laughs> she <laughs> is. I have faith. Mm, well, you, I, okay, that's <laughs> cool. As soon as, listen, two weeks in the spring, I'm gonna be like, she ain't did nothing, Pam, bye. <laughs> Not two weeks now. You gotta give her a little bit, at least a month. At least <sighs> a month in the spring. A month is a long time when something already wearing your nerves real thin, but we're gonna see. Um, because I do, I did realize like, damn, I feel like I went for like two weeks. Every time we were talking, I was like, oh, I throw this away today. Oh, I throw that out today. Oh, I got rid of that. Like I was real heavy on that for quite a while. So she could stay or whatever, whatever. Um, other than that, I didn't have anything else I kind of wanted to touch on today. You dropped some content gems. I'm definitely going to, oh, one thing I do want to say, whenever mm -hmm. you see those free like Zooms or the eBooks and stuff, send them mm -hmm. to your girl. Oh, I got I, I would like to. I would like to become a little more self sufficient. I feel like I'd be like, oh, let me let me message Pam, let me send Pam, let me text Pam, let me all day long when I have an idea or trying to figure out if something is possible or how to figure it out. So send me some of that stuff. That is something. I want to get into it. I'm not necessarily trying to be an influencer, but I do want my stuff to look the part, especially if I'm going to get rid of that other Instagram page. I got you. I got you. I'm actually going to send you something over now. I know that's right. Listen, y'all need to get y'all a Pam, not this one. <laughs> but, but get y'all a <laughs> right. Don't get this one. I, you know, I have this one a little booked and busy, but get y'all one. <laughs> we'll get y'all one. <laughs> um, 
Anyway, guys, thank you for tuning in, listening to us talk about plants and content. And we'll see you next episode. Bye, y'all. Peace. Hello, welcome to the Perfect People Podcast. Join Orlando, Faranda, Quan, and Didi for a dive into culture, entrepreneurship, corporate America, and of course, our daily lives. You get the scoop, the tea, and so much more. Imperfect people, but perfectly put together. The, the Perfect, Perfect People, people Podcast. Podcast.